The main reason I started these good news uh, brought bulletins two to three months ago was because um, mainstream media was obsessing with negativity, including doomsday forecasts on real estate markets. The usual suspects, the people who always talk down property, seized the opportunity for a bit of free publicity and had a field day. They included the nation's gaggle of chattering economists, the people who always get it wrong with their forecasts, but keep showing up in media every other day, making yet another prediction, which will be later proven to be wide of the mark. Now, almost four months after the impacts of the pandemic were first felt in Australia, the usual suspects are lining up to water down their earlier erroneous forecasts. And that's because they predicted property prices would collapse uh, with falls of up to 30 or 40 percent. And that, of course, has not happened. Nothing of the sort has happened. There is, in fact, no evidence at all of any major decline in house prices in Australia to date. So now many of the so-called analysts are retreating from their previous super negative housing forecasts. One of the latest revisions has come from UBS analysts who have softened their forecast for house price falls. In March, they predicted 20% or 30%. Now they're suggesting somewhere between 5% and 10%. AMP chief economist Shane Oliver this week also pulled back from earlier predictions of a 20% plunge in prices is now forecasting a more moderate price dip. Let me tell you, Shane Oliver has the worst forecasting track record of any economist in Australia. He just never gets it right, largely because he's always overly pessimistic and real estate keeps doing better than he thinks it should, but primarily because he just doesn't understand real estate. And I think Oliver should stick with what he knows best, which is getting it wrong on the economy and leave real estate to the experts. Another of the positives emerging in real estate in recent times is that vendors are becoming more confident are increasingly willing to put their homes on the market. The number of homes on the market jumped by 11% in May in Sydney and Melbourne, according to figures from SQM Research. And other research has revealed a surprising response, that's how it's been described, to that rise in listings recorded over the month of May. According to research by CoreLogic, there has been strong absorption of the new listings over May with prospect buyers uh, keeping a close eye on Australia's property market. Now, Eliza Owen, Head of uh, Research Australia at CoreLogic, says COVID-19 has brought about downside risks for the economy and the housing market. But one surprising sign of stabilising emerged in May, she said. Home sales have risen, with homeowners testing the market and new listings are rising. In fact, she says, buyer demand is outweighing the volume of new listings. And the strong absorption of those new listings over May can be observed across new and total listing data, she said. In the 28 days to the 31st of May, new listings rose 22.4% on the previous period, but total listings actually fell 3%. This means that even as more new stock came onto the market, buyer activity offset the additional stock. In other words, buyers are buying the new listings. Now, I'm sure everyone is aware of the new $700 million federal government scheme. That's $700 million, if they got their sums right this time, to offer $25,000 grants to people to build a new home or start a major renovation. The temporary scheme that would last until the end of the year, unless they break their promise, of course, has the goal of building 30,000 homes by Christmas. And now it's been estimated by the Housing Industry Association this will create economic benefits totaling $15 billion. And it was reported that people were out buying land even before the government made its announcement because, of course, it was foreshadowed in media articles before it became official. It was suggested that inquiries in some regions had tripled over the weekend before the announcement. And Justin Martin, who's sales manager at Providence South Ripley, that's in the southeastern outskirts of Brisbane, said he had never seen anything like it as people lined up over the weekend to secure a block of land. He said, we've seen visitor numbers double overnight and our traffic over the weekend triple. Buyers are wanting to get a foot on a block in anticipation of the government's announcement. People aren't sitting on their hands. It's a land frenzy. Sounds a bit like a real, real estate salesperson, doesn't it? But there's no doubt that there's plenty of activity in the real estate industry and it will stimulate building activity, which means more people will have jobs. Now, here's some more good news for people wanting to get into the market. According to the 
uh, Real Estate Institute of Australia's housing affordability report. The proportion of income required to meet home loan repayments has decreased by one percentage point to about 34%. Housing affordability has improved across most of the states and territories in the latest quarter, with the Australian Capital Territory having the largest improvement of 1.1 percentage points. The Real Estate Institute of Australia President, Adrian Kelly, says rental affordability also improved in the quarter, with the proportion of income required to meet rental payments on average decreasing to 23.5% of income. And just repeating uh, some good news that I brought you earlier, according to figures from SQM Research, house prices nationally rose 1.1% in the past month, with increases recorded in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide and Canberra, providing further evidence that all those forecasts of property prices falling off a cliff were sensationally wide of the mark, which is why, as I said at the start of the broadcast, so many of those forecasters are now retracting their earlier predictions and replacing them with ones that are a little bit more positive and realistic. Bye for now.